right, we're going to use the trace tables to explain and understand this procedure in a lot of detail. So our task is to rewrite this iterative function recursively. So if we just look at what the function contains, it's got a parameter n and first of all let's look in that code where is n used? It's only used in one place. So if we think of a kind of black box approach, let's pretend we don't know what the code is. What actually is happening is we're providing a value to the function and the only thing that value is used to do is to count the number of times something happens. It sets the upper limit of the loop. So logically your brain will say, well, what is it that's happening? What is it that is being repeated? Only one line of code, line four. And line four is incrementing the value of a variable. So for every iteration of the loop, the variable answer increases its value by one. We've seen that used in navigating and processing arrays. A standard, um, a standard kind of programming trick, use a for loop and use the variable count of the for loop to act as the index for the array. This question has nothing to do with arrays but it's using the same code that the example will know you should be happy and confident with. So let's see how the trace tables work to explain this. If we take the simplest case where n equals 1, line 1 n set equal to 1, line 2 sets answer equal to 1, line 3 initiates the for loop. In line 3 i, the variable the loop counter i set equal to 1. Line 4, line 4 is really the only code in the function, it's the only code that actually does anything practically. Answer is set equal to itself the current value of answer which is 1 plus the value of i. So answer and i, those two added together makes 2. 1 and 1 makes 2. Line 5, i is incremented so i becomes 2. Controls then pass back to line 3 and in line 3 the value of i is checked and the loop will only execute up to a maximum value of i where the highest value is n. What's n? n's holding the value 1. At the moment i is 2. So this loop will not execute. The program stops and effectively jumps to line 6 that returns the answer and then it would end at line 7. So the answer is 2. So with an input of 1 we get an answer of 2. Let's look where n equals 2. n equals 2, the first part of the trace table is identical because we're just following a simple iterative solution. But this time, when line 5 increments the variable counter to 2, line 3, the loop will carry on because n holds a value of 2. So the loop will execute so long as i is not greater than 2. If i equals 2, the loop will carry on. So in line 4, the second time we um, execute line 4, the second iteration of line 4, the value of answer, the value of answer, the second time through the loop will be the value of i, which is 2, added to the value of answer which is 2. 2 plus 2 makes 4. So you can see this pattern 1 plus 1 makes 2, 2 plus 2 makes 4. So you start with a value of n, you call the function with a value n and you're given back an answer of 4. The nth number in the sequence, that's what this function returns. So if I type in 1 and the first number of the sequence is 2 if I type in 2, the input's 2, the output will be 4. If I enter 3, the output will be 7. So we're not going to trace this one through in detail, but look for the pattern. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. So you could tell the next answer, 7 plus 
four would be eleven and that was actually the answer to the previous part of the question so we've used the trace table to understand how this algorithm works this pseudocode the task now is to think how would we apply this in a recursive manner